Hey guys and guys, Vlad here with AVT Astro, and today we are looking at the SV Bonnie SV50380 millimeter and the five inch MK127. For those of you that might not be familiar, I run a little Astro blog called avt-astro.com. And of course this YouTube channel, so if you're not subscribed, please do consider subscribing. Over the last 25 years, I've had the privilege of owning over hundred scopes, more accessories than I could count. And having said all that, let's get down to looking at these two beautiful scopes. Alrighty guys, so let's take a look at these two beautiful scopes. One is a refractor, the other one is a Mac. As you might recognize, so here in the Northwest, we've had terrible weather recently. I actually had to drive all the way out to my dark sky property to get this review done for you guys. Um, because tonight it's actually supposed to be pretty clear. Actually, if you look out uh, towards the sun there, uh, we got clear skies hopefully coming anyway. Uh, so anyhow, so uh, back to the scopes. Uh, both of these will accept the two-inch diagonal. Um, I have a two-inch diagonal in one of these guys, uh, an inch and a quarter, and I'm going to be swapping that out. Uh, kind of, you know, working our way up here. Uh, both of them, actually, interestingly enough, this is the only Mac that I've ever seen that has a two-speed focuser. So coarse focus and fine focus there, which is pretty cool. Uh, the little 80 millimeter does have a two-speed as well. Actually, you know, very nice feeling focuser. Uh, thin finish on both these guys is actually very nice. As you can see, um, optics wise, uh, you know, coatings and that type of deal look beautiful on all of these. Um, and then while we're kind of looking at the front end here, uh, refractors usually you never have to collimate. Uh, Max are usually pretty collimation stable. Uh, this one is kind of an interesting one because this front cover does actually unscrew and they're collimation screws, so you kind of collimate it the same way that you can on SCT. Alrighty guys, so it is dark outside, finally. So what I'm about to start doing is to do some visual observing with the two scopes. Uh, so I could give you guys some feedback on how they compare and just their general performance. And then hopefully we'll, we'll get into doing some night vision and EAA with these guys. Alrighty guys, so visually, how do these two guys compare? Uh, overall guys, I mean, obviously there are, you know, quite a bit of a different scope. There is a, you know, fairly large aperture difference. So 80 millimeters versus 127 millimeters. Uh, this guy does gather 2.5 times the light of this guy. So, you know, a pretty substantial difference, especially for deep sky. That's not to say that this is going to be a much worse, a more worse scope for deep sky and everything as we'll get to. Overall, um, I'll just kind of cover everything. Uh, for double stars, uh, refractors, they give very, you know, pinpoint, uh, you know, uh, star images. So for double stars, this is still an excellent scope. This technically will split closer doubles, especially if you have good scene. Although, uh, you know, many of the good, like, you know, really nice looking doubles that have like a good color difference this will still be able to split and look beautiful in. Moving on to the planets, guys. Uh, this is one place that I will say that the 127 millimeter, you know, like around a five inch aperture, will definitely be better than the three inch. I feel for the planets, you really need at least a four inch scope. So if you know, if you're kind of more into the plants and you're kind of like leaning towards the refractor after you know, you watch this review. And by the way, if you're getting any benefit from this video, you like any part of it, please, you know, hit the thumbs up and do subscribe. Okay, so uh, planets wise, yeah, this thing that will give you, especially during nights of, you know, better scene, uh, it'll definitely give you, you know, better planetary images. With an 80 millimeter, the issue is that you'll kind of, you know, start to really kind of top out at the uh, mag magnification that you could, you know, use with it without the image getting like, you know, significantly dimmer. So I'd say, you know, like this guy, you'd probably be able to get up to, you know, 120, maybe 150 X before the image really starts to get dim, even on Jupiter, which is a very bright planet. Uh, the moon will still look good with the uh, Saturn will still look good, you know, Jupiter will still look good. Uh, but overall, especially if you get a, you know, a good uh, example of the optics on the Mac, you will get better images. Okay, moving on to deep sky. Um, I will, you know, I could, you know, spend hours talking about this. I'll kind of sum it up and, you know, like me, you know, like observing the other night with both these guys really kind of confirmed this. I've compared, made this type of comparison many times before though, so I didn't find anything different, you know, from past experiences. For smaller objects, uh, like smaller planetary nebula, like let's say, you know, I observed M57, the rain nebula with these guys. Uh, this definitely gives you a larger image scale. Having that, you know, 2.5x the, you know, light grasp definitely helps you on those uh, kind of smaller objects. So this guy definitely does show you a better image of, you know, the smaller stuff. Um, also another one that I observed was M27. 
Ah, uh, so there is definitely a clear difference with the benefit clearly going to the Mac. Now, conversely though, guys, uh, larger objects such as M31, uh, the, you know, Great Andromeda Galaxy, those really huge objects. I mean, M31, guys, you know, it's uh, it's over three degrees in, you know, in the sky. So, that, so you can stack up the moon six times, you know, like the disk of the moon six times to fill it. So that really does not even fit in the field of view of the sky, uh, you know, to, like completely. Whereas you can easily fit it in something like a smaller refractor so it really you know for deep sky it really depends what you're after like if you're like looking at the really uh, uh large open clusters this will be a better scope uh, large galaxies such as m31 uh, m33 this will be a better scope again for anything that's smaller i'd say like a degree or smaller this will easily be a better scope for you Alrighty, guys and as i was talking like the, those images that i've been kind of posting in that was taken with the night vision device obviously uh so that kind of you know gives you a pretty good approximation of like the image scale between these two guys uh because you know that was using the same exact you know like setup you know like uh as far as the eyepiece and everything so and that also actually you know pretty closely approximates you know what the actual view is through these guys I will say though guys, uh, through like when you're actually looking you know, like with your eyeball through the night vision device, the, the view is a lot clearer, it's a lot less grainy than it does show up in pictures. That's kind of unfortunate. And I am posted on two uh, pictures that I took that were taken through the 80 millimeter of the um, North American Nebula and the California Nebula, just to kind of show you guys what kind of crazy views night vision can provide. And that was just with this 80 millimeter. So really cool, if you've never seen those nebulas, uh, they are not easy to see, and that's one view that even visually without night vision, this scope is able to provide you from a dark sky with the appropriate filters. A night vision though does make it a lot better. Alrighty, and lastly guys, so I just wanted to post in a quick EAA demo of you know how these scopes compare. So this was on M42 later on in the night. Um, so, uh, wide field of view through this guy, as you can see, you know, beautiful image that showed up. Um, I will say that uh, this is an FPL uh, 51 glass that this uses, it's just an ED doublet, so there's some a very obvious secondary color, you know, around stars. So if you are using this for, you know, like for specifically kind of more for astrophotography or EAA, you know, be prepared to kind of, you know, accept that. I mean, it is an entry level scope, guys. Like right now, this thing is retailing for $327. And by the way, check out my video description. I'll probably have some links to some coupon codes. This is the Black Friday deal. So depending on what you're, you know, when you're watching this video, it may be different. Um, <clears throat> the MK1, uh, uh, 127 is retailing for 479 uh, currently. So switching over to the MK127, as you can see, much larger image scale. I'm really only able to get, you know, just the central portion of the nebula. Um, as you can see, that trapezium region does really show up, you know, like with a lot of detail, a nice pop in the colors and that type of deal. So overall, very nice image provided by the Mac as well. Uh, these Macs do actually come with the reducer, I think it's an F, because uh, na natively they're in uh, F11.8. The reducer drops it down to an F7.8, I believe. Um, I actually did not try that. I know that there's many reviews that are kind of more specific astrophotography focused of the scope. So, you know, like do, you know, watch those. Uh, I wanted to give you guys kind of more of like a visual perspective of the scopes. So overall guys, I mean, uh, visually I enjoyed using them both, uh, both excellent scopes. I really didn't see too many issues. Um, you know, again, with this guy, uh, for astrophotography, I did see, like I said, the only issue that I kind of saw, you know, quote unquote issue, it's really like any of these scopes in this price range will have said but that is the little bit of secondary color. Uh, the Mac uh, optics on that are, you know, good. Um, I will say guys, uh, compared to other Macs that I've had, like the ETXs and that type of deal, I'd say that these optics on this specific sample, not, you know, like, I don't know, maybe some of the other samples are gonna be better. They're not quite as sharp, I would say, you know, as previous Macs that I've owned, but that's not to say that they didn't provide, that this didn't provide very beautiful images. I mean, I've had, you know, I've had the scope for actually for a couple of months. Um, uh, you know, the planets, nice views of the moon, deep sky, you know, especially from a dark sky is really impressive with the scope. So overall, you know, it's a very nice scope. Uh, as I mentioned earlier in the video, this thing is actually very easily collimatable, just in case you ever have to tweak the collimation. This thing was shipped to me from another uh, YouTube, you know, reviewer person, uh, you know, kind of across the US. 
Uh, Optex arrived in collimation when I got it. Uh, I did confirm that, so I didn't, I didn't have to tweak them at all myself. Already, the kind of you know, you know, speaking about the, you know some of the accessories that I use, and I'll have links to all the stuff in the video. I read that finder, guys. I use this on all my scopes, as you guys can see. There's a couple of tacks here. They both have read that finders. I typically only use that. Uh, SV Body did send me this right angle finder, you know, for, for this kind of more visual type of review. Um, I actually found this combo really cool. Like you know, you kind of uh, like roughly point with the uh, red dot, right? And then you could usually you know kind of zero in. A lot of the deep sky objects. I will say did show up on this kind of harder to see because this is a smaller I forget I think this is like a 30 millimeter uh, finder uh, but the, you can see like a, like most of the misery objects do show up on this so you can kind of you know kind of fine point it uh, they sent me a couple of eyepieces that I, I just specifically used for this review so I didn't you know have any of my like kind of like uh, you know nicer eyepieces I guess on purpose because I just wanted to see how this combo works. So 26 millimeter, uh, two inch, I actually asked them specifically to send this to me. It's a 70 uh, degree field of view. Guys, in the Mac, like in this scope here, this eyepiece was killer. I mean, very nice wide field of view. The stars were pretty sharp. Again, this is a slower scope, f11.8, so uh, no coma really, you know, pretty much at all. I mean, there is a little bit at the edges, but very not objectable. With the 80 millimeter, uh, this is an f7 scope, so a faster scope. Not terribly fast though. Uh, this thing did definitely exhibit some coma, so basically stars essentially start to look kind of like comets towards, you know, the outside of the field of view. Uh, you know, that was me kind of looking for it, just generally like using it was not bad at all. So this is a really inexpensive, you know, good like wide field eyepiece. Um, and actually, I specifically asked for this combo because I, I like, to, this is a combo that I use myself personally a lot of nights when I don't want to drag out my whole eyepiece case. So zoom eyepiece, right? So you've got from seven millimeter to 21 millimeter. This is one of the less expensive ones. Uh, not the widest field of view. I have reviewed this eyepiece before, so I'll, you know, I'll put a link in the, uh, like up above right now. So check it out. Very nice views of both these scopes. You know, I really like, you know, enjoy uh, kind of using the zoom experience. <clears throat> I will say just real quickly, but do watch the review now. Uh, it is not perfocal at all. So when you change the, you know, like the zoom level, <clears throat> you do have to refocus. So that was kind of a bummer with the side piece, you know, especially like reusing it a couple of years after I uh, wrote the review. <clears throat> all right, guys. So um, as far as the diagonal, so they did send me their, you know, like inch and a quarter diagonal. Um, this thing is, uh, you know, it's dielectric. It says 99, you know, percent reflectivity. Um, overall aluminum design, it does have a, uh, you know, like the little brass insert. So it doesn't mark your eyepieces up. So very nice. So I, uh, I had, you know, like I used my own, uh, two inch diagonal. This is an Explore Scientific, which is probably, you know, about equivalent. I mean, these are probably like made in similar factories or who knows, maybe in the same factory. Uh, I didn't see any difference with them. So yeah, I mean, for the very little that these things sell for, it's a very nice diagonal. And I believe they make a two inch version of this as well. Yeah, I'll have all that stuff in the description for you guys. Whoo, all right guys. So if you guys made it this far, thank you for sticking around. Okay, to kind of see you know, some, some stuff up and bring the ship home. Like if I had to buy one of these telescopes, primarily for visual use, maybe for some EA as well though, or you know, if you happen to have a night vision device for that, which one would I choose? If I had to have only one scope, like and say, let's say this is my only scope, right? I'm not, I am limiting myself to one telescope. I would easily, like, without a you know shadow of a doubt, be the 127. Uh, so this thing, like I said, uh, it'll be better on the planets. It's better for deep sky stuff. For most deep sky, I mean, unless you live like at a dark sky site and you just really enjoy watching, you know, the really wide objects. This will show a better view of pretty much, I'd say 90% of deep sky stuff. Uh, double stars will look good in them. Just overall guys, I mean, I've said this in previous videos, like a scope around five inches will give you a lot of what the nice sky we you know will show. Now, is this gonna compare to my 24 inch daub or like this, you know, six or five inch, you know, apple? I mean, yeah, okay, it's not that good, but I mean, it's still though, I'd say, you know, I'll show you like 90% of what you could see, you know, in a decent, reasonable amount of detail. But however though, let's say if you already have like an eight inch daub or, you know, like an eight inch SCT or something like that. In that case, I would easily choose, you know, a small refractor such as this 80 millimeter. Absolutely, you know, great for wide field of view. It's a great grab and go scope. Although this thing really isn't any worse for grab and go. 
they're really about the same size you know all said and done uh so yeah so it depends as an only scope this one if you already have a different scope that's a larger one uh, i'd do this one so yeah hopefully you guys found this review and comparison helpful if you guys have any questions comments or anything like that please leave them in the thing below if you're not subscribed please do consider subscribing and i'll see you guys in the next video bye